The next step in our RCM study is to complete the FAMICA for our locations hierarchy. That is, we need to add the functions, functional failures, and causes for each one of our assets. We'll start by adding the functions. Functions are added to the bottom level of locations in the hierarchy. So in this example, a function could be added to the screw feeder, but not to the extrusion unit. The location must be the lowest level in order to have functions appended to it. To add a function, we select the location, and then we can use the Add Function toolbar button, the Add Resource Function menu option, or we can right-click on the location and select the Add Function option from the context menu. The function will automatically be given an ID consisting of its parent, and then dot, and then an auto-incremented number. While this ID can be changed by the user, it must be unique. The description, ideally, should be some text that describes the function of the asset. Note that we can add multiple functions underneath a single location in the hierarchy, as I've done here. The next step in performing our FMEA is to describe the functional failures of the locations. To add a functional failure, we first select the function, then we can select the Add Functional Failure toolbar button, Menu option, or right click Context Menu option. As before, the ID will be automatically generated, taking the parent function's ID and then appending a letter to it and the description would describe the way the asset can fail to perform that function. As before, we can add multiple functional failures to a single function. The final step in our FMEA is to create the causes. Causes are added as before by selecting the functional failure, then selecting the Add Cause toolbar button, the Add cause menu option, or again the add cause context menu option. The cause properties dialog has a lot more options than either the functions or functional failures or even the locations dialogs. This is where the bulk of the data that's going to be used in our RCM study is entered. On the first tab, the general tab, we again have an ID, which is based off of the parent functional failure ID, a description, and then three other text fields. These other text fields have no impact or bearing on the analysis or the simulation. They're extra information that the user can record. As in a standard FMEA, we will need to describe the effects of the failure mode. The E in FMEA stands for effects. To do this, we select the effects tab in the cause properties dialog. Effects can be added from a list or created new. To add an effect, I simply select the Add button. A list of all existing effects in my project will be shown in the dropdown. Since I have none created, I can select the New button to create a new effect. In the Effect Properties dialog, I would enter an ID, a description, and then also define the severity of this effect. Severities can be defined across four categories as either per occurrence or rates. So for example, a per occurrence severity is one that is accrued every single time the effect occurs. A rate severity is one that is accrued for every hour or every time unit during which the effect occurs. The four categories in which we can assign severities would be cost, safety, operational, and environmental. Cost, of course, is the easiest unit to understand. It's generally dollars, pounds, euros, or whatever your local currency would be. Severities can be a more user-defined scale. It doesn't necessarily represent anything real-world, but it could. So, for example, safety severity might be the number of injuries or casualties that would occur due to a given effect. Environmental severity could be something like the number of tons of toxic material that would be released if the effect were to occur. For this example, this particular effect only has a cost rate. I'll enter a cost rate of 400, and that refers to the cost for every hour that this effect is occurring. I select OK, and the effect is selected from the dropdown. The next thing to do is tell when this effect applies and how likely it is. The first three checkboxes tell whether or not this effect applies in the case of a failure, 
in the case of planned maintenance, and in the case of inspections. Certain effects, like production losses, are likely to take place during planned maintenance when the plant is shut down. Other effects, such as safety hazards, fires, and explosions, would generally only occur after some hazardous failure. The redundancy factor refers to the beta value in a traditional FAMICA, where beta represents the conditional probability that given the failure mode occurs, that the effect occurs as well. So, for example, a redundancy factor of 1 means that when the drive shaft shears, there's a 100% chance of a major loss of production. If we have standby backup systems or redundancies, this probability of the effect may be reduced if the backup systems successfully operate. If we don't know the redundancy factor, RCM cost can calculate it for us. We can enter the number of additional components in a parallel arrangement and the number required to be operating, the fractional downtime of each component, and it will calculate a redundancy factor for us. So suppose there's two additional drive shafts, and of those three, two are required to be operating, and each drive shaft has a 1% fractional downtime. RCM cost will calculate a redundancy factor of 1.99%. I can select OK to apply the effect. Note that an arbitrary number of effects can be assigned to a single cause. Effects can be added through the Cause Properties dialog, or they can be created separately. We can also create effects by selecting the Add Effect Tool button, Menu option, or selecting the Effects node from the Project Hierarchy and selecting Add Effect. Once created, an effect can be applied to multiple different causes. The next tab in the Cause Properties dialog is the Failure tab. This allows us to define how often or how likely the failure is to occur. We have a few different ways of arriving at this based on the sort of information that's available to us. The most direct way would be to choose our failure distribution directly and then enter the distribution parameters. RCM cost supports a number of different mathematical distributions, such as the exponential, various Weibull distributions, normal and log normal. The fixed and buffer distributions are generally not used in RCM cost. These are primarily included for compatibility with the AVSIM module of the availability workbench. So for example, if we know that our asset has a mean time to failure of 8,000 hours exponentially distributed, we can enter that directly. Another method of specifying the failure data would be to use a Weibull dataset. If we are using the Weibull module, we can choose a Weibull dataset from this dropdown right here. The Weibull module is a separate topic, which will be covered in another video. The final method for entering our failure data would be to use the failure distribution wizard. We can access that by selecting the magic wand. The failure distribution wizard allows us to select which parts of the bathtub curve apply to this particular component's failures. Does it experience random failures? Does it experience wear out? Does it experience infant mortality? We simply check the checkboxes for those portions of the curve that apply to this component. Next, we go to each tab and enter some basic data describing each one of those failure modes. So for instance, what is the failure rate for random failures? On the Wearout tab, we would enter the operating age when Wearout begins, and about how long after the beginning of Wearout will the majority of components have failed. On the Infant Mortality tab, we enter the Infant Mortality period, and the mean failure rate during that Infant Mortality period. When we select OK, RCM cost will automatically choose the distribution and enter the distribution parameters for us to match the curve we described in the distribution wizard. The remaining options on this tab allow us to enter additional information to describe the failures of this component and how it behaves. The non-operating failure apportionment allows us to tell RCM cost how the failure rate of the component is adjusted when the component is not operating. For instance, if the component is in warm standby when not operating, and failures only occur about half as often when it's in warm standby as they do during operating, we could enter a 50% non-operating failure apportionment, telling RCM cost that the failure rate is reduced by half when it's in standby. The non-operating aging apportionment is similar, but applies to age-based maintenance. So for example, if the maintenance policy is to perform maintenance 
when the component has 2000 operating hours of age, if the component is in standby for long periods of time, we may not count those standby hours towards its operating age. For both the non-operating failure and non-operating aging apportionments, we have to tell the program how often it operates by entering an operating time factor. An operating time factor of 1 means the component is always operating. Time factor of 0 means it's always in standby. We can enter an initial age if the component is not brand new at the beginning of the simulation. For instance, if we're analyzing a system that has already been in use for some years, many of the components in that system may be well along their way in their particular aging curves. The dormant failure checkbox allows us to specify that the failures of this component will not be immediately revealed. This would be most common on a standby or protection system that is only required to operate when it is needed. In order to tell RCM cost how often it is needed, we enter a demand frequency. For dormant faults, the effects that we defined on the effects tab are only produced when a demand is placed on the equipment. We will come back to the maintenance, alarm, commission, and redesign tabs in another video when we are discussing how to determine the appropriate maintenance strategy for this component. As with functions and functional failures, you may add multiple causes underneath a given functional failure. An alternative way of editing data, rather than entering it through the properties dialogs that are opened when I double click on an item, would be through the grid view on the right hand side. The grid view gives me a tabular layout of data within the RCM cost program. When the grid view is selected from the right hand view mode, the grid toolbar allows me to choose and set various properties for the grid. The leftmost control in the grid toolbar is the grid table selector. This allows me to choose the table of data that I want to display in the grid. For instance, causes, locations, or maintenance tasks when we come back to those. For a given grid table, I will also have various different grid layouts. The grid layouts determine which fields are visible and hidden, and also other options like sorting and filtering. For each grid view, I can also adjust the fields that are displayed using the grid layout options, the filters that are applied to the grid using the grid filter, and the grid sorting options. There is also a find and replace option that allows me to search for and replace the data that can be found in the grid view. Often we will find that we have the same assets that are repeated within a given system. Rather than recreating these within the RCM locations hierarchy, we can use copy and paste to duplicate those assets, since the same asset type will most likely always have the same functions, functional failures, and causes. So for example, I can create another screw feeder by simply selecting the existing one, right clicking and selecting copy, or using the corresponding toolbar or menu options and then selecting a new parent and selecting paste. A new item will be created using the same existing data that I have. This data could even come from another project file. If I've previously created an RCM study that has the same types of assets that appear in my new RCM study, I might open the project for that previous study that I performed and copy data out of that. I can do that using the library feature by selecting the file Attach Library menu option. I simply need to browse for my existing project, find the item that I want to copy, and drag and drop it from my library on the right-hand side to my project on the left-hand side.